Reef Teats is sponsored by Brightwell Aquatics and Ball Reef Supply. Today we're going to get an update on the Waterbox 7225. What's going on guys? Devin from Reef Dudes. So today we are doing an overdue update on the Waterbox 7225. It's been a month or two since I've done it. A little bit of maintenance few changes, so let's get to it. So if you guys have been keeping up on my videos, a month or two ago I did a bit of a comparison on the G6 Blue versus Pro. If you saw last week's video on the how to upgrade, you will have guessed that I did upgrade them all to match now. So I'm now running G6 Pro clusters and upgrade all my G5s. Now one really cool thing that I noticed so far, if you take a look at these zoas, they are now growing on the underside of the rock, which is absolutely crazy. Now that's just from the last like month or two of that G5 blue that was there. So the whole underside of the rock is Zoa. So that, that's a whole new chunk of real estate that's kind of appearing with the more blanket of light in the tank. So that's pretty cool. Now the upgrade process itself was pretty darn easy. It literally took less than five minutes for fixture. And it, yeah, got all of them upgraded. They're all nice and matchy match now, which makes me happy. It did slightly bug me that one of them was more blue and the other was whiter. So at least now it's a cohesive color all over the tank. I did debate alternating them, being like a pro, blue, pro, blue, pro, but matching just kind of makes me happier. A couple changes in the tank. You will notice I did used to have a, that big green goblin anacropora here. I did remove that. It took up too much of this area. It was growing too fast. I was hiding the corals behind it. So I just have my nice orange Tropicana there now. I'm going to let that one kind of fill in this void and should come out pretty good. Coral wise, we have this guy is still growing up all over the overflow wall. It's really cool to see. It's it's progressing more and more, and I'm, there's actual branches coming out of it now instead of just nubs. So I think it's gonna look really cool once branches are coming out, but it's been slowly growing and growing. Um, I did lose this guy. There's one little nub that might be there, but for the most part, I did lose it. And the Sunset Moni's kind of slowly taking over that realm again. Fish-wise, we have the Diamond Gobi, who's the newest addition to the tank, and he does a fantastic job of cleaning the sand bed. It's pristine and white basically everywhere he is. Now, uh, all the other sand sifting gobes I've had in the past have went halfway up my tank, dumped sand all over my corals. This guy has not done that at all. He literally sits right on the sand bed and sifts, you know, half an inch above it, which keeps the tank and the water looking really good. Now, the other comical bit is the wrasses follow him around. It's like they try and get all little bits of food as he, they pick it up as he cleans it. So he's definitely a popular one in the tank these days. Growth wise, you can see everything is growing in very well and quite happy for the most part in here. Um, I've had done a bunch of trimming just to stop stuff from growing into each other, but there's definitely more that has to be done in here. Um, you kind of see a lot of these two, like the red dragon and the money poor stilettus are growing into each other. But even some of these, like you look in the back, you got the fox flame is starting to overgrow the stag beside it. So definitely lots of growth. Um, this guy did die back a little bit, whatever that one was. On the plus side, I got those little nubs in the back that are regrowing and coming out of there. So I don't remember which one it was, but stuff's growing, so that part makes me happy. The Ghani Island is still going strong. Um, it was originally getting buried from my sand sifter. So what I did is I put a few rocks underneath it to elevate it. So now he has his tunnel underneath the Ghanis. And that's kind of saved him from getting buried. And that's worked out pretty well as kind of a, a compromise between the two of them in the tank. Going up the rock a little bit, we have our golden rod at Acropora. Now this one is a little bit greener at the moment, but it's generally pretty dang yellow in the tank, which is really cool. And this guy has been taken off like crazy, so I'm actually surprised at how quick it's been growing lately. Now a few weeks ago we did an update on the torches and dipping it. Now there was the one or two heads that were almost gone that I did lose, but the rest of it overall is looking pretty darn healthy. And there's a good chunk of flesh over it. Now I really should do that dip a couple more times. Um, just had a baby, so that hasn't quite happened yet and got back to that, but that is on the to do list. Um, the rest of the torch seems pretty happy though so far, so I'd call that a success for the most part but I definitely do want to do a couple more rounds of dip as well. My little gold hammer has definitely spit out to more heads, which is awesome to see. Uh, my little rock fire rock, these, there is some more babies on there. You can kind of see a couple little guys in the cracks and all of the bigger ones have stayed put. They haven't really left the rock. So that's been, that's been awesome. It's really only the odd baby or two that I've seen roam around the tank. The purple candle bra Gargonian, this guy gets nipped on all the time by my tangs. Not quite sure why, but the sailfin and the hippo tang both love to nip the polyps at this. When they do, it kind of retracts for about 30 seconds and about a minute, 30 seconds, a minute later, it pops back out and it's happy again. So it's been a survivor, which has been pretty good for the amount of abuse it gets in the tank. 
our fathead dendros i've been trying to feed these guys a little more often or rather broadcast feeding this section of the tank so they can grab some mysis and it seems like they're getting bigger and happier i haven't had any new heads yet but these heads are definitely happy so hopefully we can get this colony to expand in the near future just down below it we have the rolled wide corals grafted monty this guy is growing huge i only had a little chunk of this guy a while ago and now i'm actually gonna have to probably trim it back a bit because it's starting to overgrow some of the other guys tiny little marvin the martian slowly growing getting some branches in there that one has hasn't done much for quite a while but it's finally starting to take off now on the stair side you get a whole different perspective of the tank and i don't necessarily show this one off enough because it's a little bit harder to get to but there's a lot of cool growth and really cool perspectives over here Starting in the back corner, we have a bunch of just random chunks of philia, frog spawn, hammers, bicolor hammers and whatnot. Coming over, we got some of those ultra citric, citric rhodactis, and those guys have been growing pretty good. Do have little bits of cyano in here, but not too bad overall. And above it, a nice big chunk of orange satosa. This has been growing well. My branching side faster did fall onto it, so I'll have to mount that back up later. Got some Jason Fox burning banana. No idea what that guy is, but it's purple and gold and looks pretty cool. We got a nice big colony of Duncan above it. We have some rainbow clove polyps. And again, these guys are kind of hidden. You don't really see them, but they're really nice coloration. Inside that, we've got our green slimer. Some deep water acros. And again, more of the rainbow loom. Really cool colors in this guy. I'm actually starting to get some oranges and greens and purples and more colors out of it, which is pretty cool. Now, if we open up the side of the tank, we have my hand in here. It turns on the light. I did add some little motion sensor lights inside which makes things nice and easy to kind of see what you're doing inside. Um, definitely would recommend these if you want easy stand lights or just motion activated, magnet it up with a little magnet strip and it makes life super easy. Um, skimmer wise, I actually did give this a bunch of love yesterday. So it did clean the skimmer. You can see how actually pristine it is. It's probably the first time that it's been cleaned in ages. Um, got the prime fuge going over here, clean my little Nero. Uh, this guy also have one of the little AI prime fuge flaps, basically to block light from hitting the skimmer and to keep all the coralline algae out of it. So these things are making an awesome difference on that side. The filter roller is just about due for a change. Um, on this side, we do have the LT return pump, which I'm probably due to clean that guy, all the probe holders. Inside the reactor here, I am just running some Roofos GFL right now. This is just to help with phosphates. And below it, we have a bunch of media. And in this chamber, we have our refugium. So the Chato has been growing very well. I just harvested a bunch. There's a, other than a bit of cyano in there, I'd say it's doing pretty dang good. Coming from the side here, this is where our calc reactor feeds in. And the main reason I have the little Nero 3 in here is to mix up all the additives. So if I'm dosing alkalinity or if the calc washer is dripping, it's gonna mix it into the water very quickly. Now on top of the skimmer, you can kind of see my DIY CO2 scrubber. I did do a video on this one, super easy to make, super cheap, basically Tupperware container full of media and just pipes it in. So this tees off to my skimmer intake. And the other line was going outside air, but right now I actually have it just hooked up to my ozone generator, which is down below. Next chamber over, more motion lights. Definitely love these guys. Now on here, we have our calc reactor. So this is kind of supplementing my ATO. So in here we do have, see the Neptune ATO. That honest, I haven't even turned that on in months and months and months. The only time that really turns on is to refill my RODI for the auto testers. Aside from that, the calc basically replaces my auto top off. Because it's just however much a day evaporates, how much I'm dosing. I just tweak it every once in a while based on the sump level to keep things stable and happy. Next to that, we do have our three liters of alkalinity, and I'm having this dose based off the Trident result. So this is the Trident controlled dosing, and that controls the dose above it. And yeah, it just tweaks my dosing as needed to keep the elk nice and stable, that's been working well. And in the back, we have a custom geo calcium reactor. Now this guy is what does the bulk of the supplementation for the tank, so we have the calc calcium reactor and then the elk just to tweak things on top of that now if we come to this side of the tank we can see the controller board now you guys probably will not appreciate this but i spent many hours cleaning out behind this this weekend if we pull this out this used to be a giant rat's nest of wires and now it is extremely organized and i have the mastertronic the elkatronic and the trident now it's hard to see it in the back, but I actually even mounted all my modules for the leak sensors and everything else in the back there. So it is extremely organized now. 
Everything's Velcroed. I can pull the board out in one piece. Nice and neat. And I've been very happy with that. I, I even went as far as to 3D print some power sub brick holders, which kind of helps slot into my 1515 extrude aluminum for the light bar. And they hold the power bricks vertically along it. So they get better cooling and it frees up more space in my stand to declutter. Also went through and topped off all my additives. Uh, right now we got replenish, restore, coral color, and shadow grow. Um, I did get asked the other day how much of these I'm dosing, and it, it's between two and four mils, depending on which product. I'd have to check the Mobi staff to figure out exactly how much of each one. But yeah, it's between two to four mils per day of each one. And of course the auto testers. So the Trident does calcium, elk, and mag twice a day. Um, it is also tweaking my dose. So it's doing the Trident controlled dosing, Alcatronic tests twice a day every 12 hours kind of a bit of redundant here but i already had the algotronic so they're just keeping each other honest and if one of them's out of whack then at least i kind of have something to double check against it and mastertronic this is test calcium magnesium nitrates and phosphates every single week and it does nitrates and phosphates twice a week i do have alkalinity region in there but again i haven't really been using that function since i already got elk testers so again a little redundant and to the right of the tank, you'll see this little jug here. This is a space saver container. I have one on the other side, which has RODI for the auto testers. Now this one is full of the Elkatronic reagent. So this lasts quite a while with it. So this little gap actually worked out pretty well for wires, power bricks, uh, reagent containers. You got the dry size for the MP60s. Now another question I get asked all the time is what do I do for flow in the tank? Now if you guys can see, I do have two MP60s on here. I have one on either side of the overflow and this is all I have for flow in the tank. This provides flow for the entire tank. Now I often get asked, is that enough? Do I have any issues? So far I have zero issues with flow in the tank and I have a lot of coral in here. Like one day, you know, maybe I'm sure it's going to grow in too thick and not be enough. But overall, you know, I got nice flow with the torches and we got decent flow with the Zoas. Now I also did kind of plan my placement around that. If you're looking, it's very acro heavy in the front half of the tank and it gets lighter on acros. I definitely still have chunks of them all over here, but I do tone it down further down the tank. And that's actually worked out very well for me. Now looking down the long end of the tank, um, you can definitely see the clarity is still pretty good. It's not quite as pristine as before I had the Diamond Gobi. Um, the first two weeks, it was definitely a little bit of a sandstorm in here as you sifted through the sand and then it cleared up and it was actually really good. And I'm gonna say it's been awesome for the last week or two. Now it's got a smidge more cloudy the last little bit only because he started to transition. He basically cleaned from about there over. And now he's starting to do this chunk of the tank. So as he goes to a new area, it seems like he finds new little particles to kick up. And then once he kind of runs out of them, the sand's pristine, then I get back to crystal clear water again. But overall, it's still pretty good considering he keeps my sand bed nice and white. Now, if you guys were following my Instagram story from the other day, my fairy wrasse actually leaped out of the tank. I came in and found him on the floor with dog hair on him. So I picked him up and put him back in the tank and kind of held my hand in there, waved him around a bit. Then he started swimming around and came back again. So I do always keep a top on my tank. This one is the D and D aquarium solutions one. And I literally took it off to clean it, had it off for a while. And of course he took the leap out. So thankfully he is happy and healthy and I did get back in there quick enough. So that was good, but it's a good lesson. Good reminder. Make sure you put a top on your tank. Um, if you do do it, I'm always a fan of going with the black mesh because you don't really notice as much. I find the clear mesh will reflect the light and makes more obvious. Or if you get one with black mesh, it, it's fairly low profile, it kind of blends in and you don't overly notice it. Let me also notice I have these little fans on the back of the tank. This was a really cool model actually designed by Harry's Aquatic. So I modified it a little bit to fit on my tank, but I have two decent size 120 mil Noctua fans in there. And this basically just blows air across the top of your tank. And with the heat, it does help cool it down quite a bit. So I've been letting those run most of the time and it's a fairly ste stealthy, low profile way to kind of help cool your tank. Coral wise, you know, there's been the odd little hiccup, but for the most part, I'm pretty happy with everything inside of the tank. It's basically growing very well for almost all my corals, except for the odd one in there. So for the most part, it's just kind of letting things ride and grow and try and keep things stable. So the tank thrives. Now, if you're comparing this to some of my videos way back, I did have a lot more stuff on my sand bed. One of my goals has been to remove a bunch of the sand bed corals. I still got a few things in there, but there's way less than there used to be. I do like that look of having the pristine sand bed and most of the corals mounted on the rocks. So 
slowly kind of working towards that one. A bit curious to hear if you guys have a Palenza tank, what you're rocking for flow or how you set yours up. Did you do something similar, do something different? Let me know in the comments below. I know Palenzas can definitely be a little more of a challenge on certain aspects, so it's always cool to hear other people's situations. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that update on the Waterbox 7225 Peninsula. If you have any questions on my build, be sure to let me know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, as always, be sure to hit that like button. Make sure you guys subscribe. I'll catch you guys on the next update.